King Charles III was coronated after months of planning, decades of preparation, and centuries of tradition. It was the first coronation in Britain in seven decades, and it marked a new era in the monarchy's history. The whole world witnessed this special event. Charles is the oldest monarch ever to be crowned, thus he undoubtedly made history. There were several firsts at his coronation, as well as many special moments. The ceremony kicked up in Westminster Abbey at 11 a.m. During the sound of a century-old coronation anthem, Charles entered the church, and those exact words were, I was glad. The new monarch was very pleased as seen by his bright smile. The coronation event featured a number of significant traditional moments. The oath of coronation, the investiture, the anointing, and the recognition were among them. During the first section, King Charles read out a prayer, making him the first monarch to do so at a coronation. Then he signed his oath to serve the nation. The anointing was the most revered and private chapter. Although most of it took place behind closed doors, the process itself is public knowledge. During this time, the Dean of Westminster poured holy oil onto the coronation spoon from a gold eagle-shaped flask known as the ampulla. Charles was then blessed by the Archbishop of Canterbury on his hands, breast and head. The king then put on a full-length coat made of gold silk cloth, and the next section began. He was now due to receive the royal regalia. The jeweled sword, which stands for the defence of the helpless, was one of the most impressive objects. Charles then held the sovereign's orb that represents power and the Christian world. A representation of regal majesty is the sovereign's ring. And of course there was the crown, which was placed on Charles's head and was accompanied by the words, God save the king. The crown is called St. Edward's crown and it was made for Charles II back in 1661. It is composed of solid gold and weighs four pounds and 12 ounces. So wearing it is no easy task. Camilla was crowned queen shortly after wearing Queen Mary's crown. For the first time ever, a queen consort was given an old crown rather than a brand new one. The decision was taken in the interests of sustainability and efficiency, which Charles valued highly. However, it was not Camilla's only memorable piece of jewelry. She also wore a diamond necklace that had previously been worn in the coronations of four other queens, Alexandra, Mary, and Elizabeth II. The exquisite piece of jewellery, made in 1858, shined brightly from all angles and perfectly matched the crown. The coronation was far more understated than previous ones, despite the impression it gave some people that it was grand and pretentious. It was, for example, significantly shorter than Queen Elizabeth II's. Additionally, it was less formal and had a fourth as many guests as the previous one. Not that a royal event is truly something you could call casual. However, the dress code has been changed to be more casual. Women were told, for instance, to dress in day dresses. Men were also recommended to wear a morning coat, a suit or a military uniform. The country's present financial crisis explains all of those changes. Another reason is because Charles wants to show that he is a modern monarch. But the royal family's more informal attire did not prevent them from shining as brightly as they might. As usual, Princess Catherine raised a sensation with her great style. She chose magnificent accessories that honoured Queen Elizabeth II and Princess Diana. She was wearing a diamond necklace that belonged to the late Queen, and Lady Di formerly owned her pearl drop earrings. The Princess of Wales finished her stunning ensemble with a royal blue cape and a glittering silver headpiece. Of course, everyone's attention was on her and Prince William's three children. Prince George, their eldest child, was one of Charles's four pages of honour. He carried his grandfather's robes inside Westminster Abbey and walked in the King's procession, and he was the youngest future King to attend a coronation. Charlotte resembled her mother in her lovely headpiece and stunning outfit. The girl and her younger brother acted like any other children during the coronation. They exchanged whispers and pointed fingers at something. Nonetheless, they were always respectful of the important day. William and Kate's three children were dressed in the three royal colours, as royal fans noticed. Charlotte wore white, George red, and Louis dark blue. However, the children weren't the only ones to steal attention from the king and queen on their big day, because many people were keeping an eye on Prince Harry. However, it was not a simple task. The Duke of Sussex, 
was seated directly behind Princess Anne, who was wearing a headpiece with a large feather on it, and that feather frequently obscured the prince's face. Some royal supporters wonder if it was done on purpose. In any case, it was evident that Harry would play a minor role at the occasion. This is the first time he has seen his family in months, and two significant events occurred throughout the time. We're talking about his Netflix docuseries with Meghan Markle and his explosive memoir Spare, of course. So everyone was curious to watch how the prince interacted with his father, brother and other relatives. However, the royal family didn't want to make too much of their disagreements visible. The prince was solely treated as a guest, with no official role in the coronation. He was also denied the right to wear his military uniform, which sparked outrage, because another member of the royal family with a bad reputation wore full regalia. We are talking about Prince Andrew, and at least one member of the royal family did not attend the celebration. Harry's wife, Meghan Markle, was that. The official reason stated was that their son, Prince Archie, celebrated his fourth birthday on the same day. So the Duchess made the decision to remain in the US and plan a private birthday celebration for him. And after the coronation was complete, Harry himself vanished. He didn't even take part in the royal procession. Instead, he is said to have returned home to be with his children and wife. That's when all eyes returned to Charles and Camilla. Their Majesties rode in the parade on the Gold State coach. It is now more than 260 years old. Despite being stunning, the coach could only move at a walking speed due to its four tons of weight. Because of this, the procession was a little delayed, but it undoubtedly added to the grandeur of this important royal event. It also provided an opportunity for Prince Louis a chance to make silly faces to the crowd as they made their way to Buckingham Palace. At the time, one of the family members played a critical role. Princess Anne was chosen as a gold stick in waiting. In essence, this serves as the monarch's bodyguard, so it's always given to the one who can be trusted the most. Thus, Anne was riding close behind King Charles and Queen Camilla as they made their way back to the palace. This essential practice stretches back to the Tudor era, so Anne was honored to take on the role for her brother's big day. She was given this position by Charles for a reason, a royal source claimed. It was his way of thanking her for her years of unbroken service to the kingdom. Naturally, others from outside the British royal family attended the coronation as well. Guests from all across the world joined the coronation. For example, King Felipe VI and Queen Letizia of Spain, as well as royal couples from Malaysia, Japan, Thailand and other countries were invited. Emmanuel Macron, the president of France, attended the event with his wife. Jill Biden, the First Lady of the United States, traveled to represent her nation alongside her granddaughter. It was also the first British coronation to allow guests of other religious faiths, Buddhist, Hindu, Jewish, Muslim, and Sikh leaders also attended the event. Female bishops served in the service for the first time in history. These new elements were set to reflect the diversity of modern society. Many people were happy to see the changes and accept their new king. Despite the rain, royal fans have been gathered outside Buckingham Palace all day. However, not everyone was pleased with the coronation. During the ceremony, there were large anti-royal rallies across the country. The protesters wore yellow t-shirts and chanted, not my king. Police actions prevented them from ruining the day as six protest leaders were arrested. So the coronation proceeded as scheduled and the culmination occurred on the balcony of Buckingham Palace. King Charles III and Queen Camilla, together with the majority of their family members, went out to greet the throng. Prince Harry and Prince Andrew were not present, but everyone else was all smiles, and as usual, Prince Louis was waving to the fans as noticeably as he could. While they were standing there, the Royal Air Force's famous red arrows flew over the palace. It concluded the day's public celebrations, However, the king and queen were so taken by their balcony moment that they walked out again, much to the delight of the onlookers. The coronation was indeed a spectacular sight to witness. It was an event for the ages, with hundreds of millions watching from around the world. And what do you think about the coronation? What was your favorite moment? Share in the comments below.